Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I'm really excited that I am a guest tutor on the Stencil Girl um, products um, blog and um, I'm going to be creating a piece using some of their fabulous stencils today. So you will find all the links to the stencils in my description box below as you will a link to the blog where I've got a bit more information about which stencils I've used and so on and some of the other products I've used as well. So I'm starting off in my um, original Dina Wakely journal and gessoing some of the craft pages. Now I know there's some people out there who can do amazing fabulous things on craft paper but I really struggle with it so I tend to every time I get it gesso it and I don't know if it's just me but it always curls on me so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. When I've finished that I'm starting off putting down some collage tissue rice papers. Now these are a bit special to me because these are some collage tissues that I have designed for Scrap FX. Um, and it's got the black and white version and the color version. So these are the test prints. Um, and because they were test prints, I was being very sparing with them and just using them up as, you know, I wanted to use them all on the page, but I wanted to have some for some other projects. So I was being a bit cautious about how many I'm putting down. So the great thing about um, collage tissue or collage rice papers is when you glue them down, um, they go a little bit translucent and they sort of blend into the page. Now that works particularly well with the black and white versions. With the colored, it doesn't really matter so much because you still got the color peeping through. After I've finished, I'm just going in with a little bit of gesso just to blend in those pieces into the background. So because some were black and white and some were colored, I just wanted to make sure that everything sort of had its opportunity to shine. I'm using one of the Stencil Girl um, masks to just um, pull off some of the gesso so you can still see that color peeping through from behind. But you can see instead of having those sharp edges where I'd first glued them down, they're sort of now hidden a little bit. So now I'm going in and putting some magenta paint um, across my page and then I'm wiping it off again using the stencil and you can sort of see the gesso coming off through. So this is creating a load of layers in my artwork and while you won't see much of the original stencil, you will see the texture that it leaves behind. So it's a really great way to add interest to your background without um, taking away from the final piece but giving your eye something interest, interesting to look at. When I'm doing this sort of technique on my art journal pages I tend to use the same stencil over and over again because that repetition is really important in, in your artwork and you can sort of see the effect that's start, starting to build up. So I just did that with turquoise and now I'm going in with some fuchsia paint just to get a little bit more color on the page. Now one of the things that you will notice is once I have finished wiping away my um, excess paint, I then dry my paint with my heat tool. The reason for that is you need to have your um, background layers sealed or um, dry before you do some wet paint on top because when acrylic paint is dry it is permanent so by building up those layers I'm building up layers of permanence if I had put it down wet and then not dried it and then put some more paint over the top one I'm going to rub away my design of my stencil and not get those layers and two um, the colors are going to mix together so instead of having that beautiful pink and, and turquoise I'm going to get a purpley color over the top so it's sort of really important that you dry your layers in between when you're doing these layering techniques so you can see now that I've got some a really funky background going on. You can see the collage coming through because you've got the layers peeping through. It looks like they're sort of trapped between each other, which is a really cool effect as well. These are some another range of collage tissues from ScrapFX. And these are designed by the very, very talented Michelle Logan, who um, is one of the designers for scrap fx and they're just beautiful and as soon as i saw them i thought oh yeah i have to use those on something so again i'm just using some matte gel medium and gluing them down onto the page and you can see that they go slightly translucent that you can see the background coming through from behind which is the reason why i love using these sorts of collage tissues particularly the black and white versions because you can see what's going on behind um, your beautiful work doesn't get lost because I wanted to bring some of that um, coloured 
rice paper into the foreground again I decided to use it as um, a way to anchor my figures to the bottom of the page so if I hadn't done this I would have had figures floating in in the sky which always looks a little bit odd so having some way to ground them is really really important now that could be with using collage tissues like this or it could be just painting a stripe of stripe of paint across the bottom of your page but just some way to sort of make sure it's all sat in one place I'm now going in with my Stabilo all pencil so this is a water soluble pencil and it's great for just doing sort of random mic makings on your page and little scribbles and so on on this page I haven't water activated it but you can do and that gives you a really cool shadow as well on your page the what I'm doing now is going in with this unfinished stencil again from um, stencil girl products and drawing through it using my paint pen because I only actually wanted well using some more of this stencil later on but I wanted the words in disguise so I'm doing a little bit of um, stencil shopping in this because I wanted to sort of write out a phrase underneath but it wasn't all on one page so I was going through lots of the different stencils to find out what I wanted to write so I think most of these stencils are um, Carolyn Doobie stencils or this one definitely is and she's got lots of word stencils which are just fabulous I use them so often in my artwork so I've just used some washi tape to um, block off some of the words above and below where I wanted to have the UR because all those words are quite close together I didn't want to have other words on my page so using a little bit of washi really helps to um, make sure you're only getting what you want I wanted to have the unfinished as well on this page because the figures that I had seem a little bit unfinished um, to me so it's sort of a work in progress and I like the you are in disguise um, because it just appealed to me one of the figures has um, no one but me written on it as well so um, it's all sort of that mysterious unfinished you don't quite know what's going on on the page which really really appealed to me when I finish doing this I think at the moment I'm busy trying to find a quote to put on the page because it was very heavy on the left hand side and I wanted to balance it up on the right hand side to find quotes when I'm doing my work I tend to go to Pinterest to have a look up and I'll use some keywords to find it so I think I used um, unfinished or um, masked emotions or something like that as a keyword I can't remember the exact keyword I used to find this quote um, but I came up with she remains an unfinished piece of art which I just loved um, because it echoed this entire page to me and to do my writing on this I have been doing this quite a bit recently is extending the long strokes and just making everything um, not even not regular so it totally goes against what I teach my children it's handwriting at school um, but it just makes it look a little bit more interesting the other thing I always tend to do with my artwork is I either put a shadow or a highlight on my letters just to pop them out from the background so on the white ones I used a black pen and on the black words I use a white pen for me I always do it on the bottom left hand side of all my letters I find if I've got a bit of a rule in my head that it, it always goes on the bottom left hand side I can keep it consistent it doesn't matter what side you put it on you can put it on the top right just be consistent the whole way through the other thing I did was to paint in the whites of the figures eyes now even though they're really sketchy eyes just by putting that little bit of white in their eye automatically draws your eye to where the eyes are on the page it makes your your eye recognize the figure as a face or has a face on it which is really important and the final thing I did was to do some dotty white marks all across the page just using some a paint pen and that sort of just ties the two pages together just having that sort of flow through and I actually did some of the little dots across the figures as well just to tie it all in together the final thing I did or I'm doing is something I do with all my abstract figures 
and that's just to cut out a heart or to use some heart washi um, to put a little heart on it. I don't know why I do it but nearly every single abstract figure I have in my art journals I've done something similar to this. So this is uh, the finished piece of art and here is a close-up of how it all turned out. So you've got the fabulous um, stencil, um, stencil in the background Again, they'll be listed in the um, description box below, as well as a link to the um, Stencil Girl blog where you can see some of the close-ups um, as well. So please head over to check that out. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to Stencil Girl for inviting me to be one of their guest tutors on their blog this month. I really appreciate it. Until next time, bye for now.